All right, I'm back. We got some Stormbreaker brewing today. This one is Set Freshies to Haze. Fresh Hop Hazy IPA. There's a look at the label. Looks like we got like a kind of a Star Trek looking figure with like a laser gun or some shit like that. Who knows? Maybe he's riding a storm and he's shooting the lightning bolt. Something like that. I can't quite fucking make it out. Um, let's see what it says. Local and independent. Damn it, Jim. Long, live long, drink beer, and prosper. Okay, definitely Star Trek. Uh, Citra, Mosaic, and Strata Hops provide this hazy IPA with stunning aromas of passion fruit and mango with flavors of grapefruit, tropical fruit, and hints of strawberry. Set your taste buds to haze and engage your palate for this freshy. Citro Mosaic and Strata coming in at 6.5 IBUs and or 6.5% uh, and 47 IBUs. Not too shabby. Stormbreaker out of Portland, Oregon. Yep. All right, let's crack it and see what we got here. Today we're doing the old IPA glass here. And we'll just pour it, get a look at the color, the aroma, and taste before we get into our shave. Hope everybody's doing well. Hope everybody had a good Monday. All right, so this is what we're looking at here. On my side, because it's always darker on the video, but on my side, it comes out as a bright yellow, um, opaque. We got like three fingers of bright white head here. Got some good carb coming out of that one. I can still see it swirling down towards the bottom. Let's uh, get a little snip. Mm. Some very vibrant, kind of like orange, citrus, little bit of pith, um, bitterness, perhaps grapefruit. Very nice uh, bitter citrus on the nose there. Oh yeah. That's not bad. I wish it had a little bit more hot bite. It's a real juice bomb. <clears throat> Definitely got that passion fruit and mango. Real juice bomb. Has a bit of sweetness to it. Let me go back in for one more. Low bitterness. Maybe just a little bit of um, grapefruit, but really not that much. It's mostly a juice bomb, mango, passion fruit, sweetness. Okay, put that down. For today's shave, we're gonna be using the Happy Land Studios uh, in collaboration with Strike Gold Shave um, Barbershop. So this, the scent on this one was made by Happy Land Studios Fragrances, and then the soap base and aftershave, you know, grooming products were made by Strike Gold Shave, um, you know, as well as Jennifer. Um, so, we got the notes wrapped around the bottom here. So we got Ambroxan, Lavender, Musk, Leather, Spicy Pepper, and Bitter Orange right there. Nice label, kind of shiny waterproof label. Uh, same kind of design on the side label. You can see the ingredients there. This one has the Tussa Silk, so I think it is the Commander-in-Chief base. Correct me if I'm wrong. Five ounces, and then you can see the collaborators there. <clears throat> There's a look at the soap base on my side. It's kind of an off-white, kind of like eggshell color. Um, firm, but not so firm that you can't easily press into it. Um, I would still consider this, um, you know, a shaving soap, though. It's not quite that soft that I would call it a crope. We have it already lathered up over here in the Thirsty Badger Shave Bowl. So there's a look at that lather. Let me get it out of the direct sh uh, shine there. But very creamy, very luxurious, has a nice shine to it. That is what I'm talking about. There's a better look at the uh, shave bowl there with the handle and everything. Very nice product out of Canada. Really, really like that bowl. It's splitting 
um, game time with my Lancaster Bowl at this point. And then for the shave brush, we got this beautiful Leaf Lads um, brush. It was made to uh, resemble a cigar, so we got kind of like the, uh, you know, the brown tobacco color, the typical cigar band, and then the top lighter maple kind of wood was supposed to replicate the ash. And I chose to put an AP Shave Co. Cashmere Synthetic Knot on mine. You can see again that lather looking very dense and luxurious. Okay, I am going to add a little bit of menthol to my shave. So we got, if you're unfamiliar with this uh, handsome tool right here, this is the Thriller and the Pillar, the Menth Diller, and this is a bougie chill mill with menthol crystals loaded up in the chamber. And this is actually just a salt, a salt, salt and pepper grinder, if you will. It's a pump action, so you just hit the pump, and you can see the uh, the menthol get to flying. Haven't had a decent menthol shave in a little while, so decided, what the hell? Let's go ahead and bust it out. So. Shout out to the Bougie Chill Meal cameo, and I don't know if that's going to show or not, but there's a nice coating of menthol crystals right there, and it, I crush them up really fine before I load it into the grinder, so the grinder is more or less just dispensing rather than actually grinding, um, but the reason I get it into a really fine powder is just so that it can incorporate into the lather um, pretty much as soon as it hits that moisture, it incorporates really easily. It, it dissolves really quickly, and that way I'm not, uh, <laughs> I'm not, you know, my lather doesn't end up being like a sandpaper, because that would not be enjoyable. So you want those crystals to dissolve into the lather, which they do really quickly, so it's really not an issue. Let's get some moisture on the face here. Oh... So had a nice Monday today. I was at the uh, the small one man office today, so no supervisors. Um, it's typically a pretty chill day when I'm working at the one man office for the most part. I don't have no help, but it's also a lot slower than the other two offices that I work at. So I had a pretty good day. Um, I'll be back at the main office the rest of the week though. So my little easy Mondays. Probably the only easy day I'm going to get this week. But that's that's fine. Take our wins where we can get them. The scent on this one is very nice. Very it's a it leans traditional but it has this um this really pleasant warmth to it from the ambroxan and leather. So it leans towards a more traditional barbershop but it definitely has a twist. It's definitely not what I would consider a modern barbershop because nowadays modern barbershops are kind of um, super fresh, super clean, not as powdery, not as um, spicy, I guess you would say. This one here definitely has that spicy powdery DNA but it also has a little bit of warmth um, which I think was a nice a nice twist on it. it it makes it if regular barbershop was masculine you know the the leather and ambroxan helped this one become even more masculine I don't think it's hard to wear though. This one can be used year round. It's not so warm that you can't wear it in the heat of the summer. Okay, we're gonna be using this bad boy. This is a Schick injector right here. We got the white Bakelite handle, or kind of off-white, similar to the color of the soap. We got a Schick Proline B20 blade loaded up. See that little bit of blade gap? See how um, sleek 
that profile is on that razor. This one is in really good condition, actually. Let's go ahead and get this uh, get this shave in. So this will be my first shave back um, outside of the straight razor August that me and Marion did. I mean, I guess if we were using our heads right, we would have done straight razor September just for the sake of the alliteration and the hashtag. But me nor Marion thought ahead that far. Anyways, had a whole month of straight razor slash Chevette shaves. And this is my first shave back. And um, I wanted to get a Schick Injector shave so bad during August. You gotta remember, Schick Injectors are my favorite type of razor. They are my preferred method of shaving if I was, you know, to only have one razor for the rest of my life on an island or whatever the hell they say. It would be a Schick Injector. Schick Proline B20 blades are absolutely magnificent. If uh, if you're getting into Schick injectors, um, I would say it's a necessity that you get the Schick Proline B20 blades, but since they're actually technically a Chevette blade. Weird, I know. Um, technically they're a Chevette blade and they're they don't have the key required to load into a Schick injector. So technically even though they're my favorite Schick blade it's kind of a, a labor of love because you got to load them into another cartridge before you load them into um, your Schick injector razor. So that's a little bit of a pain in the ass. It's, it's not as hard as it sounds, but it's definitely an added step that I wish we didn't have to do, but we do. Um, if, you know, only if you decide to use those Proline B20 blades, which just so happen to be my favorite Schick blade, but it's not a, not a necessity. There are a few other Schick injector blades out there, so you still have options. And those other blades come with a cartridge that has a key, so you don't gotta worry about you don't gotta worry about swapping a blade over in the whole nine yards. They are actually, you know, marketed as injector blades, so there are the other options out there. Okay, let's go ahead, let's see. I'm gonna go ahead and put some more moisture on the face and then we'll lather up again. Got a nice medium menthol chill right now. Menthol cooling which is very enjoyable. The scent on this one is about six out of 10. So nice, bold, banging, enjoyable, ever present, because it's not, it's not uber simplistic. It's got a few different, you know, unique qualities to it. So Oop, ooh. <laughs> that could have been bad. My toothbrush almost took a ride as I was drying off my hands. All right, let's get some more lather here. We got plenty of lather left over, enough for two more passes, although I will only be doing one more pass because I'm a two-pass shape. 
I do two with, you know, it's like 2.5. It's like a hybrid two pass because I don't re-lather. I just, you know, use the existing slickness to, um, to do some across the grain motions. But for the most part, I just do with the grain, against the grain, and call it a day. But I do do a few across the grain motions in my problem areas. I have those, you know, little hair swirls. I don't know what you call them, cowlicks or whatever. I have those little hair swirls that require extra attention. I have them on both sides of my neck and the middle. So I definitely gotta do some across the grain on the neck. Not so much on the cheeks though. <laughs> when you when you get that just crisp uh, beard line, that's it's almost orgasmic <laughs> when you hit it just right. You got that kind of perfect degree. I think I fucking nailed that one too. When you get that kind of perfect degree, uh, that you know that perfect radius on the beard line where it's just crisp <laughs> that's what I'm talking about all right against the grain on the neck light touch always kind of stretching where possible even though it's not not 100% required with um, a Schick injector, you know, unless you have folds or loose skin, then I would, I would always recommend stretching if you have folds or loose skin, but with safety razors, including Schick injectors, it's not 100% required to stretch the skin, but I would say it's always recommended. It's always going to lead to a closer, safer shave if you take that extra bit of caution. Get those long strokes in. And it's really just cruise control with these Schick injector razors. This particular one kind of has a uh, medium efficiency and medium kind of blade feel. I don't want to say aggression because it feels it feels smooth the whole t the whole shave. So I don't want to say aggression because it doesn't feel aggressive, but medium efficiency, medium amount of blade feel. The the blade is kind of you know ever present. You you know where you're. Where the blade is at your skin on your skin at all times, because you it just has that amount of blade feel. Um, not all shicks are like that, so don't you know don't get that mindset stuck in your head, because some shicks are very smooth um, with low blade feel, but this particular one has some medium blade feel, medium efficiency. It gets me to BBS every time as long as I got a good blade in there. <clears throat> Get this lather off. And then we will go into the post shave. Definitely nice and close. I think we got our flawless BBS this time. Which is pretty par for the course when it comes to Schick injectors. Okay. Lancaster Black Sheep Towel in yellow. And even as I take this lather off, the uh, scent on this one is still kicking, still smelling great. I 
And as always, the Strike Gold Shave products just performed amazingly. One of my absolute favorite shaving brands just does so much for the community. And as far as a brand, completely, you know, unique sense that they bring to the table. Um, they, they do so many first, you know what I mean? They're, they're first in the wet shaving world on so many different fragrances. <clears throat> Big shout out to uh, the Strike Old Shave team. Um, here's the matching aftershave. This one no longer has aloe. Or not aloe. It does have aloe. It no longer has alum, which was a point of contention for a lot of wet shavers. And Strike Gold Shave listened to the feedback and, and got rid of it. Uh, industry standard quality restrictor right there. Go ahead and get a nice helping. Get a little bit on both hands. Still an alcohol aftershave. Um, I would say it's a traditional aftershave in that sense. A bit more lavender and musk um, in the aftershave. Still has that warmth though. Just the slightest amount of tingle right there on the neck. From the alcohol, that is. And that smells real good. I'll put the residual on the forearms just to complete the scent bubble. And that'll do it for this one. Thank you guys for watching. I appreciate you. I'll catch you on the next one, and I hope you guys have a good week. Cheers.